the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. We have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. Amen. Now, mighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distant and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Our responsorial psalm, Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed, Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine, 
in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. Bless the Lord, the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. After a long time the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come share your master's joy. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening. Good evening. At this time, as we do our announcements, I ask our ushers to hand out to you a holy card. As you know, on this weekend of the month, we reflect on the Virgin Mary. And I would always like to give you a holy card, something about a prayer, a knowledge, uh, concerning Mary and I found this unique image of Mary and I thought that this would be nice to offer you. Now also as we do this just 
a reminder. With Thanksgiving coming up this week, our office will be open on Monday and Tuesday. As you know, normally we're open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, but due to Thanksgiving, we will only be open on Monday and Tuesday. So please, if you need something, call the office on those days. Uh, secondly, our Thanksgiving Day Mass will be at 9 a.m. here at St. Thomas. Okay? Normally, we have morning Mass at 8 a.m., but it will be here in the church at St. Thomas at 9 a.m. on Thursday morning. And also on Thursday morning, there will be no men of St. Joseph or Daughters of Mary, so that those who participate in those two groups can go if they need to travel or if they are cooking to entertain. Okay, I think, oh, and lastly, as you probably, you almost hit your head on it, but you saw that we have a sign out in the front to convey our new mass schedule beginning on December the 24th. Okay. I think that will conclude the announcements. And if I don't see you Thursday, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you have a great time with your family and friends. Thank you. Now, I wanted to take some time and look at, as we reflect on Mary, the stanza of our Hail Holy Queen prayer where we say, and after this our exile, Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And I wanted to place that in relation to our first reading. Our first reading came from the Old Testament book of Proverbs. And in it, we hear traits, traits listed for a worthy wife. And the one that drew my mind and attention was when they said, she reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. And I thought, who better than Mary exemplifies that line of Proverbs? For in that prayer, when we say, after this our exile show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, we are literally say, asking her, extend your hands, reach out your hands to us who are poor and needy. But the real question begins first by asking ourselves honestly, am I needy? Using the words of the prayer, am I in exile? Now, when I was reflecting upon that for you to present tonight, I, I, I thought, is a person in exile needy? And I started to go over in my mind various examples of individuals, world leaders who have been exiled. And although some have had their own means as far as they've been exiled with their family and close associates, but many of them have been exiled with financial means, but they were still needy. They needed a place to move. And I thought to myself, well, do I see myself as someone in exile? And when I say I, it's a question that we need to ask ourselves, each one. Do I see myself likewise as a person in exile. Now the church has often spoken to us, reminding us that we are pilgrims on a journey. We are in exile. And that is true. But because I read that, doesn't mean it drops, give or take the one foot, a little over a foot, from my head to my heart. Do I believe it? I may know it, but do I believe it? Do I see myself as someone in exile, someone who is needy? 
And that opened up a line of thought, because what does it mean to be needy? Now, when I say that nowadays, especially at this time of the year, when we think of people in need, we think of people who need assistance, material assistance. It's often at this time that we get phone calls to the church, you know, are we assisting financially? Are we assisting with food? And so when one thinks of need and the person in need, in exile, we look around and we say, well, well yeah, I might not be, quote, in need. Sure, you know, this isn't the greatest economy that we're living in. I think everybody can agree with that. Prices keep going up, our paychecks keep going down. But we're making it right now, here. Most of us are making it. So I don't think we can look at need in that way. And then when you look at other aspects of need, we associate that with someone who is struggling with something. And sometimes we think of, oh, that's the person, God bless them, they're in a group. They're dealing with an addiction. And I thought that that's one of the you know, that's actually a very beautiful thought. Because even in that, it really understands that need. Because what do they always say? I am powerless against this. I am in need. But for so many of us, not struggling with those addictions, we may not see ourselves in need. We may say, well, financially, we're doing well. And then we might see others, and we think, well, that's the person in need. But I'm not really sure, because, you know, there are people who gain the system, who make a profit. They can tell you of every food bank in our area and what day that food bank gives what things. I remember years ago, uh, I'm off. Uh, just a, a story where a person showed up, and true story, I was, uh, I was assigned here on a Friday, back in 05, and Thursday I was still at the other parish as the assistant, and a person showed up, they needed $5 for a stop leak, because a radiator leaked. I didn't have money, the pastor was there, so that's the pastor, he gave me five bucks. Well, Friday I go, I get a haircut, so I look pretty for y'all, I shave, you know, got rid of the beard. I show up here, Saturday morning that person drives up. They need $5 for stop leak. <laughs> they didn't recognize me. Yeah, you always have that. And so when it comes to the person in need, there will always be that group. But that's not the ones I want to speak about. Because I don't want to speak about being materially in want and need. When the church looks at it, the church looks at it from a spiritual dynamic. And some of the people who are most in need are the people who don't realize they're in need because they have all things that they want. So why do they think themselves in need? And we look at here in the United States, thank God we're in this beautiful country where so many of our conveniences can be answered. I get hungry, I got fast food, fast food, or I go down to how many grocery stores we got in Sarah Land. I can walk across the street and get something to eat. We're so blessed with so many things that the idea of being truly spiritually in need doesn't affect so many. Let's be honest, if it did, our church would be packed. All churches would be packed if we really thought about how in need we were. But in that prayer, we remind ourselves, I am in need, yes. I need God. I need his help. I need to hear his voice. And the way God operates, and this is the difficulty in it, and it requires faith, is because so often 
God doesn't speak to us directly. I can turn on the television. I can hear some minister talk about, you know, the other day I was in prayer and God spoke to me. And I said, oh, sweet God, I wish you would speak to me. But he doesn't appear in that way and speak. You know, someone said, you know, Father, I turned on the radio in my car. My favorite song came on, so I knew God had spoke to me through the radio. Okay, well, what's your favorite song this week or that week? A lot of times God speaks to us and he does it in a still small voice that we only recognize when we're quiet when we're by ourselves when we try to be spiritually still that's the only time we can truly recognize him because he speaks to us so often in the most innocuous ways it's the neighbor it's the relative who says something that we need to hear. It may be someone who says something that, that we don't want to hear, but we need to hear. There's a big difference. God may speak to us through the friendly smile of someone. Someone who helps us to do something simple. Maybe they open a door for us when we've got our hands full. It's just the little small ways God affirms us. Because if someone is there saying good morning and holding the door open for us when we have need, they do that because they've been influenced by God in virtuous thoughts and actions. We are in need. So when we call to Mary, we say, Mary, mother, I am in need. I am in exile. I admit that I need help. Show us, show me the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Now this is where I find people become so unreasonable in their own ignorance. Because so many, thank God, and I mean this sincerely, thank God we have taken the time this year to learn about Mary, to dedicate this year to Mary, to realize that the Catholic Church has been asking Mary's assistance prayerfully since the 200s with Tertullian. No, excuse me, the 100s with Tertullian. Because if we didn't know that, we would be like so many walking around saying, well, you know, Mary is just one of many avenues and not realizing the true importance, the historical, traditional importance that Mary has had in Christianity, in Catholicism. And God bless our poor brothers and sisters of other denominations who never were raised with that beautiful tradition. They don't know it out of ignorance. But we... As Catholics, had we not done this, we would have never known it, most likely. Because we wouldn't have taken the time to research it, but we have. And we come to realize the importance that the Catholic Church has always placed upon Mary in her intercession. The other day I, I met someone, and they were talking to me about the rapture. And, uh, oh, by the way, I put the second half of that in your bulletin from last week, that handout. But they were telling me, that, you know, you know, Father, I believe the Bible literally. Everything literally. So if, if, if there is a rapture, I believe. And if God created in six days, I believe. And I said, oh, you believe everything in the Bible, word for word? Yes, yes, I do. Word for word. Word for word, Father. Word for word. I said, okay, then explain John 6. How do you rationalize John 6? Where it says, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life within you. He said, wait, hold it now. Hold it. You know, Jesus spoke symbolically, metaphorically at times. Oh, okay. So we don't believe the Bible. When it comes to Mary, we often find so many people 
all of a sudden getting cold feet. Even though they sincerely ask each other and they ask us as we ask them, can you say a prayer for me? The other night we had the lighting of the Christmas tree at Chickasaw. You had the Baptists, you had the Methodists, you had the Catholics, you had members of other smaller denominations all together as one Christian family, all asking prayers for each other. Pray for me, pray for me, support me, help me. And asking God, help all of us, one family, your family. But when it comes to Mary, God's great gift, as you remember, we found that out reading the gospel when Jesus said, <clears throat> Woman, behold your son. And son, behold your mother. And, said, and from that hour, the disciple took her to his home. And how that was given to us. She was given to us. And we were given to her. And we asked, Mary, please show us the fruit of your womb, Jesus. And that's where one of the most beautiful things, if you think about, happens. That if we ask her to, she will guide us to see the fruit of her womb. Where? Most specifically, can we find the fruit of Mary's womb? Right here. Right now. In this mass. For think of it this way. And I, it's not a, please, this is not my thought. Actually, this thought came from the book we're reading on Wednesday night, a Lego book made up with Legos. But the thought is so beautiful and so much attuned with our Catholic theology. When we speak of the fruit of Mary's womb, think of it this way. Do you remember back in the Garden of Eden? <clears throat> Man's destruction is guaranteed when man and woman fall to the temptation of the serpent and they pluck the fruit from the tree and consume it. Tonight, each one of us will have an opportunity for the fruit of Mary's womb, Jesus, the fruit will be placed back upon the tree as it was at Calvary in 33 AD. The fruit is placed back upon the tree. And our salvation is offered if we consume worthily that fruit from the tree. The body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ our God, the fruit of her womb, in his Eucharistic species. That's all we're asking. Mary, show us the fruit of the womb, your son Jesus, and she points here to this moment, at this time. Here is my son. Take him. Receive him into your heart, into your soul. Receive him worthily, worthily, not in a state of mortal sin, but worthily. My gosh, our prayers are answered at this moment. May Almighty God be with you. May he bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand for our profession of faith, our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. Consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, 
He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, which has gone into the world of Mary, and the King of Heaven. For our sake, he was crucified by the Holy Spirit, he suffered death and was buried, and he rose again on the third day, and the Lord of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge us to the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess on the baptism of the gifts of sins. Now I look forward to the resurrection day and the life of the world to come. Amen. Coming together as one family in faith, we offer to God our prayers and our needs. We pray for our Holy Father, for our Archbishop, for all priests, religious brothers, sisters, permanent deacons, and seminarians. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick or suffering in any way this day, and those who take care of them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the needs of our brothers and sisters who will watch this Mass on video and for the needs of you here present in our church this night. We pray for the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all of our holy dead during this month of November, especially those whose names have been placed upon our altars. For them and the consolation of their families who remain, we pray for the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And we pray this Mass for all those who were born during this month of November, that God may shine his eyes mercifully upon them, and they may grow in their love for him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude asking for Mary's assistance as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of that thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, and now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I offer to my name the sticks and seek, the deliverance of the Lord. Number 296, and I wish to lay on page 271. <laughs>
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine, and the work of human hands, who will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your name, for the grace and glory of your name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Grant the Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you, and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through you made all things, through you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands to endure his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the ages and all the saints, we declare your glory. As with one voice, we acclaim. <laughs> Church spread throughout the world and bring her to fullness of charity 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. The Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be
He hath partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Prayer to Saint Michael. Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us to God. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, rise into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The divine praise and protection against storms, hurricanes, and other disasters. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus and the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, apparently. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary, most holy. Blessed be your holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be your glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, 